have used for decades to load their boats with bass. Freeway swivel, five foot liter of heavy monofilament to a bucktail, and then from the other loop of the freeway is like a one foot uh, liter down to about a one pound sinker. You drop that rig to the bottom, you're watching your fish finder trying to follow the contour. As soon as that thing hits the bottom, you pick it up two or three cranks and you hold it. You don't do anything else. You're not bouncing it. You're just trying to follow the bottom contour and holding it still. And it's just a devastating technique for bass. Anybody, I mean, you've done that, right? You go out there, you're not bouncing, right? No, you pick steady. that up, you hold it, and what happens? Boom! Yeah, you know. So between doing that fishing and doing diving, um, you know, that's really got me where, yeah, you don't need to be, you don't want to be thinking about bouncing that bucktail. You just want to swim it. Now, that's not to say you don't put an occasional twitch. Yeah, slow retrieve, a little twitch here and there, but again, just trying to swim it. Okay, so think about if you're on a sand beach and you want to accomplish that objective. Well, the first thing you've got to think about is how deep is the water that I'm casting into and, and also how much current is there. Well, on an open beach, most of the open beaches, the current's negligible. It just really isn't much. You're probably casting into, I don't know, 10, 12 feet of water. Not, in our, on our beach, is not much deeper than that. So if you want to cast a bucktail into 10 or 12 feet of water and get it near the bottom on a slow to moderate retrieve, what's going to happen if you put a two ouncer on there? That thing's going to be dragging on the bottom right away. What you need to do is use lighter weight bucktails. And when I'm on the open beaches, I'm using a lot of three quarter and one ounce jigs. Those are really the two main sizes. Sometimes I'll go a little bit lighter. If it's rough, I might go a little bit heavier, but I'll tell you what, three quarters and one ounce, uh, they get a lot of play. Um, in terms of buck, the bucktails themselves, nothing fancy. You know what, if I never had anything else but white on white bucktails with either a rounded head or a smiling bill style head, I'm gonna be happy, I'm gonna do just fine. This happens to be a blue frog fixed hook bucktail. Love these bucktails now. I started using these last year. I got addicted in a hurry. And I've got a lot of bucktails in my basement that I make, and they're excellent bucktails. And these are really good. I mean, if you're gonna buy bucktails, this is the one I'd be buying. Um, so this is a one ounce jig. No, this has got a pretty nice profile in terms of what a peanut bucker looks like. So, you know, this is why I'm throwing bucktails a lot around peanut schools. Um, that's a one ounce. Here's a three quarter ounce. The point is, you know, the, the biggest mistake that I see is that anglers use bucktails that are too heavy on these beaches. So just lighten up. Um, rarely will I use a bucktail with nothing on it. I use uh, either a number 50 or a number 240 or a number 70 strip of Uncle Josh pork rind. White's a fine color, red's good. Um, I use 50 a lot because, you know, one of the problems with bucktails, they don't cast very far. But um, if you put a number 50 strip on there, it's like four inches long. It's not very long. It doesn't cut too much. It doesn't put too much wind drag, cut too much into your casting distance. But it gives you just enough of that little wiggle in the back to make it um, an enticing offering. On the other end, on the number 70, that's a little bit bigger. I think it's a five and a half inch strip. Um, if I'm trying to get the bucktail to ride a little bit higher, or I'm trying to give it a little bit larger profile, longer profile, I'll use another a number 70 strip. So there's a lot you can do just by changing um, the trailers on there. Now, you know, I mentioned in terms of heads that I'm happy with rounded heads, smiling bills. I don't get you know, too much into the other head designs <coughs> for surf fishing. Um, now, what is important and I think way, way more important in head design is how dense the jig is. And this works out great because here's a pair, I don't know how well you can see that, here's a pair of um, blue frog fixed hook bucktails, have never hit the water, took these right out of the package. Forget the color, but they're, they're both three quarters of an ounce, and I don't know if you can tell from where you are, but this one's a heck of a lot thicker than this one, and, and maybe you can see it, you know, I think, yeah, I see some head shaking, yes, so I think it's pretty obvious. These are entirely different lures. They, they cast different, they swim different, 
They work different parts of the water column. You know, when, you, when the guy next to you and he said, oh, I'm using a three quarter ounce. Well, look at this. This is the same company, same everything. And there's a huge variation. Now think about if you've fished with a bucktail for a while and you've caught a couple of bluefish on it, you've thinned it out, uh, you could go on and on. I mean, when I tie my bucktails, I'm making sure I intentionally tie some that are, you know, a little bit bulky, tie some that are thin. Um, when I reach into that bag for a bucktail, that's really, you know, besides the, the weight, that's something I'm looking at. And, and why? Well, you know, if I need casting distance, if those fish are just put sort of on the end of my casting range, guess what? I'm going for this thin one because this is going to cast a lot further than basically the same model of weight bucktail that's got more hair on it. But if I'm on the south side of Montauk and maybe I don't need the distance, but I've got, I'm fishing over shallow, rocky, no, it's, it's shallow, it's a rocky bottom, a lot of weeds. I'm trying not to get hung up. Guess what? I'm going to be going with the one that's thicker. If you look at the bucktails I'm carrying in Montauk, they're probably a little bit different than what I'm going to carry on the South Shore Sand Beach where, you know, I can hit the bottom, drag the bottom. It doesn't make any difference. You do that in Montauk, you're going to be hung up. So, you know, take a look at the density of the bucktails and pay attention. And you know what? It, it's no big deal to go out and buy a couple of deer tails and wrap some extra hair on a jig too. I mean, it's a nice way to recover your jigs that are all chewed up by the bluefish, but it can also give you the ability to, to make some nice variations on the lures. So that's something, you know, I, I look at. I mean, and, and part of that bit about it swimming higher with a denser bucktail, I mean, think about why that is. Is, you know, if I pull this hair out and throw it in the water, what is it gonna do? It floats on top, right? Because it, it's hollow, it has air in it. So the more air that I add to the jig, the more air I put on there. It just, it's a more buoyant lure. Um, 